The first test used two inch hoses with sling type width checks which were attached to a tension load cell on the test rig. This was connected to an electronic force indicator programmed and calibrated to a resolution of five kilograms. The compressor was started and the pressure raised to 350 psi. The air supply was then shut off as a solenoid valve was energised, releasing the hose. The procedure was then repeated at pressures of 400, 550 and 700 psi. During this test, an 8mm sling type whip check failed with an indicated loading of only 65 kilograms. Following close inspection, it was ascertained that the whip check had been cut by a sharp shoulder on the hose fitting. Following this round of the tests, discussions were held and it was determined that forces measured were lower than expected. This was considered likely due to the shock absorbing characteristics of the hose. As can be seen in the slow motion video, the hose fitting travelled past the end of the whip check before the whip check took up. The resulting loop in the hose therefore absorbed a significant amount of what would be considered normal shock loading. To counteract this, the test bed was redesigned and tests conducted in two parts. The first part would consist of purely measuring the forces encountered when the hose was released. Whip checks would not be used in this test. The test device was modified to include a steel yoke for retaining the hose when released. The yoke was secured by locking studs so that its position could be varied by adjusting the nuts. The yoke was linked by two load cells to the test rig and each hose was fitted with a circular plate to capture the force of the hose when it came into contact with the yoke. Using this configuration, the force required to stop the hose at different travel distances could finally be measured with accuracy. The test commenced using a 2-inch hose at 350 psi. The travel distance was varied and the forces measured were recorded for each of these distances. At this point it became apparent that the force at zero travel distance was equal to that calculated under static conditions in the desktop engineering study. From this point the force dropped rapidly as the travel distance increased to around 40 millimetres but then started a slight increase for a short distance. Following these observations a decision was made to conduct all remaining force measurements with a travel distance of 100 millimetres. The tests were repeated and measurements continued with a 2 inch hose at pressures of 500 and 800 psi. This was followed up with force measurements on 3 inch and 4 inch hoses at 350 psi. During one of these tests however, the 4 inch hose failed. This was particularly interesting because the hose burst at a pressure well below that which was quoted by the manufacturer. The hose was brand new and in undamaged condition. The second part of the test program consisted of observing and recording how whip checks of different designs and configurations behaved in restraining a failed hose. The steel yoke was removed from the test rig and a short sling type whip check was fitted to the two inch hose. Two shorter sling type whip checks were also tried. as well as a sling type whip check fitted with a safety hook. This was followed by a single leg cable stocking type whip check. and finally a double leg cable stocking.
So the final recommendations are that all high pressure hoses be fitted with cable stocking type whip checks. Construction should be of stainless steel or galvanised steel wire rope and the completed unit must have a minimum of 900 millimetres hose grip. It must be fitted with two attaching legs, each no longer than 450 millimetres, with formed eyes. Full strength requirements are shown in the final report. All high pressure clean air hoses should be fitted with internal whip checks as well as the external cable stockings. Where external whip checks are to be used on hoses with bolted fittings, such as the Dixon Boss style, the whip check should be manufactured to incorporate protection for the attaching legs. This may be provided by including a plastic or rubber hose over that part of the assembly. The whip check should be fastened to a mounting point provided for that purpose and should be positioned where it is protected from damage and excess wear. Of course the shackles or bolts must be of at least equal strength to that of the whip check itself or the whole system is still likely to fail. Finally, employees must be made aware that the potential for a hose fitting failure is just as likely as for a failure of the hose itself. It is therefore essential that the hose and tail assemblies are matched.